a lot of people, it's not about the colours they choose. It's about just not pre-thinking about how it's going to work before they go and make a selection. You're listening to the She Renovates podcast. You're listening to She Renovates, the podcast for women who want to renovate to create an income and a life they love. So today I have a guest um, in Adam Skugel. Have I pronounced that correctly, Adam? You, you've done amazingly well there. It's normally people say Skalgal or Skrugal even. They add an R. Oh, that's There's nice. no R in there, but. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, listen, so now Adam is an interior designer that I met through a dear friend in Deborah de Jong. And Adam has had quite a colourful history in the true sense of the word. He has a, I guess you would say, a special interest in colour. Is that what you would say? Yes, definitely. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. I love colour and that's my jam pretty much when it comes to interiors. Awesome. So um, we're on the right path. And so what I thought we would do is firstly I would get you to introduce yourself and tell us a bit about you because you tell it much better than I do. So a little bit about how you came to where you are today and the type of work you do and then we'll get into our topic. Okay, great. Thank you, Bernadette. Firstly, just a big thank you to you for um, allowing me to come on and speak to your wonderful audience. Uh, it's, a, it's a huge uh, privilege. So thank you very much, Bernadette. I should uh, jump in there, Adam, and say um, you sent me a very creative <laughs> pitch. I could not say no to it. It was amazing on a video. So I think that that demonstrates a lot about your level of creativity. Oh, thank you. That's great. That's great feedback. Um, been using the video kind of messaging for a while, and I do find that it has uh, it dangles the bait and gets the reaction better than just some email that a lot of the time ends up in the junk box, doesn't it? Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. So I learned a thing or two from that. Yeah, okay. Um, that's Loom, by the way. That's a platform that offers that service. Uh, so get back to your question, Bernadette. So a little bit about me. I'm Adam Skugel. I am a, uh, I love colour. I love using bold, bright and courageous colour in my interior design and decoration work. So I've been designing for about, gee, I'm thinking it must be the 12th year now. Uh, but I really, um, I kind of relate, I think, to, to maybe yourself, Bernadette, and maybe your audience, because I wasn't just, I didn't start out, I didn't go to uh, uni and get a degree in interior design I spent 18 years in corporate in um, foreign exchange and card services for a large financial institution so I'm kind of I feel like I, I was listening to your um, I was watching your webinar last night actually and I feel like I've kind of got something in common with with the ladies that would be um, listening just in fact in in terms of wanting something different from my life and after 18 years as you can imagine going in working for the man nine to five and then you've got two days downtime for a capped uh, salary, I, I wanted something different. And to be honest with you, I'd sort of set up my business a few years before I actually finally left corporate. Um, I only left in 2018 for good. So um, anyway, I was really enjoying this side hustle for a long time. And um, But there was this common thread and it was that when I went to see clients, I would just see the colour opportunity, which... Um, is, is where I kind of go to, that's the place I go to. So a lot of my projects really, if you look at, I guess, my website, you'd see that there's lots of splashes of colour around. And um, I do realise that colour is not the go-to for renovation when you're trying to sell a property, um, as you could you can tell me more about Bernadette as opposed to me tell you. But, um, but in terms of long-term, and I think we've all got to have our own plans long-term for, for where we live and where we want to be ourselves. For me, it's really colour that tends to speak to me. And, you know, at the end of the day, people that come to me see that and they they have that preference as opposed to give me something I can um, not not uh, make anyone feel offended by, <laughs> if that makes sense. Exactly. And that's why you're here, because you, are, you do have such a flair with colour. 
And so what we'd like to talk about is how to choose the best colours for a renovation. And, yes, I agree that the um, our renovations have to have broad appeal, but mm. there are times when you can still be a bit courageous. For instance, one project I'm doing at the moment, I'm doing, it's not really colour, but I'm doing a black interior. Um, oh just because I've got an artwork that I think is going to really pop on it oh. and I'm sick of doing white. So yeah. so, so I'm, we're not, like, completely um, adverse to making a statement. It's just that you've got to pick your time when you're going to do it. So, yeah, so that's, that's um, this is something that is really important um, as a, pro a professional renovator for profit, but also in our own homes. And the other thing that we have where we really need colour is we have a lot of Airbnb hosts. So one of the strategies that we use a lot is short-term rental and you would probably know that you want your pictures to jump off the page when people are scrolling through and so that's where the design really um, comes into play. Oh, I love that, Bernadette, because it really sort of makes a great segue into the fact that we can use colour. It's just a different perspective. I mean, Airbnb is a great example um, to your point of being able to use it because it's like going to a great hotel, isn't it? You know, when we could go to hotels, remember? When we <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you would a few. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. But, I mean, we used to go or I remember going to places that were a little bit, uh, you know, it gave me an experience. There's a designer in the UK, I don't know if you've heard of her, called Kit Kemp, and she has okay. these, these hotels and they are totally wacky to most people in terms of the colours she's using and the patterns. But it's an experience. And I think to the Airbnb point and putting together an Airbnb that's going to, like you say, jump off the page as opposed to something else is you want to have that experience for a short period of time and enjoy it. Whereas I do understand if you're living in your home for, the, for a lot of people, they don't want to have so much kind of drama happening in terms of, all of that stuff going on and particularly bright colours and patterns. But yeah. it is good in, in that capacity, as you were just saying, Airbnb is a fantastic like yeah. idea for expanding on doing something a bit different for people. Exactly. So so it definitely has its place. What do you reckon it is that you love? And I should just jump in and say that if anyone's listening to this um, audio, we are videoing as well. Um, hopefully um, my team will cut me out because I look like a tomato for some reason, that lighting <laughs> is bizarre. But Adam, Adam is the picture of sartorial splendour. Dressed oh, I love that. Velvet, oh, yes, that. <laughs> uh, yeah, blue velvet. Is it velvet, your jacket? Yeah. Yeah. And is that a, do you call it a fedora? Or? Yeah, fedora. Yeah. Yes. So, so, yes, clearly you wear your colour on your sleeve. Yes, I do. Well, I had to had to make sure I had the outfit for this interview because I knew we were videoing. But, um, yeah, so colour, I mean, I think um, it's just, you know, it's such an important thing to me. I think, I think you're about to ask me, Bernadette, why is it so important? It's just yeah. I, I just see people um, living a lot of the time. I'm, I'm really talking about people living in their kind of homes that they may not be forever homes, but they could be for quite a few years homes. And there's just not enough colour and there's not enough sort of risk in terms of even picking just very simple colour scheme. And I think the reason behind that is because people are just too scared. If they pick the wrong colour or they put together the wrong combination and they commit to it like on a chair or a sofa where you can't just sort of take off the pillow and throw it in the bin because it was the wrong colour choice, um, that stuff is harder for most people. So I'm actually working on a online colour course that I'm filming at the moment that will kind of put all of those tools in how to pick colour simply for for most people put all of that into perspective on how you do that because there really is you don't have to be a rocket scientist you don't have to have a degree in interior design as you would know Bernadette to really be able to put colors together there's just a few fundamentals that you kind of do need to get right but it's not as difficult as people actually think it is if you follow a few kind of strategies yeah, I, look, I would beg to differ. I think that I do find, I think you've got the gift and that's, um, that's you know, why they pay you the big bucks. But um, I do think a lot of renovators really struggle with colour 
and really knowing what what should go together. And I think the idea of a course is mm. great because um, knowing how to pair colours is really um, a good skill to have when you're a renovator because you're not always going to have an interior designer to um, do your, you know, your colours and styling. And so, yeah, awesome. Yeah, that's a really good, you know, you've you've made a good point, Bernadette. Uh, I think, look, it can be difficult to pick colours and I also do a lot of one-off consultations for people. We just have two hours. And, you know, the one thing, that the first thing they say, and they'll have a list, but the first thing they'll say is, can I, we really need help with the colours? And that's probably the first cap off the rank. But I just think by going through a lot of these kind of meetings that are only two hours long, I do see a common thread and that's what I've tried to close is that gap for most people. Yeah. A lot of people, it's not about the colours they choose. It's about just not pre-thinking about how it's going to work before they go and make a selection. And that's especially true with white. You know, picking the right colour white is the hardest thing to get right for a lot of people. But it's because they've actually, they're doing things the wrong way around. The reason they're not getting the colour right or even the white right is because they're not considering what's there. You know, if they're not changing everything, you've got to be aware of the hard finishes or soft furnishings that you're not going to change. Most people go out and pick paint colours and then they'll go and think, right, I've got the paint colour, I'll go and pick the furniture and I'll pick my kitchen uh, countertop and da-da-da-da-da. But you've got limited ability with Caesar stone, for example, in you, you might like two stones. And if you've already picked a, a white that has an undertone of pink <laughs> and your stone doesn't match, then you're kind of looking at it the wrong way around. So that's probably the first thing I'd say is if you want to cut the heat a bit for yourself is have a look at what's staying, unless you're really ripping everything out from, from the beginning, have a look at the stuff that's staying that you're not changing and then have a look and see if you've got a warm or cool undertone in what you can't change. Then you know, the paint colour. That is really um, a good point. So I have a few go-tos that I, um, I don't yeah. prefer to be any have any level of expertise i've just found a process that works but mm. i know we were, i don't know for some reason we we're doing this um terrace house and for some reason i made a decision to break for my usual recipe and i decided to paint it terrace white i think i got romantically attached to the name of it yeah and it was so wrong like oh. we already like we already had a coat on at least half the place and um oh, and it just it was just really blue and that yeah. that's what you're talking about having cool undertones yeah oh absolutely i was uh, uh, this this particular client that i have she's what i call a power session client because i run these two hour power sessions and they're like a consultation uh, but we really get to work on sorting out a whole lot of things so i have this 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 two hour power session client called karen who actually wrote a blog about and she's on my website her power session yeah. detailed it but karen called me and she said to me um I've just moved into my, she just retired. I've just moved into my home. And um, for some reason, I just feel cold. I've, I've done all the painting. We've painted the whole place, upstairs, downstairs. But, you know, I go into my bedroom, I feel cold. I go into the living room, it just feels a little cool. And then I could see that her kitchen was full of, cre it was cream Caesar stone countertop and then it was taupe and browns and then I could just see this color um, which was actually lexicon from Dulux which you might know Bernadette is gray it's exactly what you're talking about it's cold so that was sitting right next to this taupe brown and that's the problem with why Karen was feeling cold is because when you've got a when you've got all these hard finishes there like the the, the cream bench top and definitely the taupe cabinets she just put in new brown carpet so everything was kind of warm warm brown 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 and then she licked this sort of lexicon white all over i mean lexicon's a fabulous color don't get me wrong for a, a bigger home where you got lots of light and you can feel a bit you're in a warmer environment maybe as well and um, you've got light coming in it can accept this cooler gray blue but um it's not the right or wasn't the right color for her kitchen to be uh you know repainting in there and using that particular color so it's just being aware of things like that I'm assuming, do you follow colour trends, like, in terms of what? 
is popular. Yeah, I know, Bernadette, to answer your question, I know of the colour trends, but I really don't follow them because I feel like it's my job to kind of um, be looking at things a little bit more holistically for my client. And a lot of the times, as you would know, when when I'm working for a client, they've got a lot of stuff that is existing that we need to use. And it could actually be, you know, could be, you know, a, a sectional L-shaped sofa in a particular colour way. And I've got to work with that. So in terms of actually talking about the trends with clients, right. Sometimes I might touch on it or we might make a decision like, you know, how green's really, really in at the moment, especially with yeah. kitchens, um, yeah. whereas previously it was kind of just white or, you know, you've got the Hamptons blue, white. Um, so at the moment it's green, but it's kind of if it's relevant to, I guess, where we're going in terms of, you know, do uh, the things that I'm working with actually going to work with a colour that's on trend? You know, at the moment we've got, you know, a lot of the salmons, you're seeing that in the, the watermelon colours and the peach. It's all kinds of feels a bit 80s, some of it, you know, back in the, the pastel old uh, 1985 days. And then, um, but then, you know, we've got those fabulous green sort of kitchens everyone's doing with the black detail and the tapware and the lighting. Um, that's really cool, but it's not really the first thing that I think about, obviously. Yeah. I'm thinking yeah. about what I've got to work with. Absolutely. And so for us, like, I really, I guess it's a fine line. I really try and tread the line between um, being on trend but doing it in a way that they don't have to live with it forever. So things right. like cabinetry, it's you've got to live with it for a long time and... Mm -hmm. You know, it might look really spot on the day you buy the property, but, you know, five years, years down the track, you'd be looking at this thinking, I really want to change it. And yeah. yeah, so it's a big expense. So I guess we have to be a little bit practical. What do you think about black tapware and coloured metal tapware? Do you... I like it. Yeah, I mean, I like anything that um, I, I just like black and white altogether. You know, I think that black and white is kind of the much needed sort of punctuation point. You know, I, I don't see it as a colour that in terms of, you know, blue or orange or whatever, but it's a black and white, I think, they never sort of, using black doesn't ever date. You know, I love the idea of you painting the wall black and having that fabulous piece of artwork in your project. To me, that's kind of a statement sort of moment. And black doesn't ever date, does it? I mean, no. you no. can see houses from whichever era that are done in black and done in white you know we're in the white walls era i know that, that at the moment you know we and you would know too bernadette we went through what have we done really last 10 15 years we went through that sort of great um taupey brown yes. you know the earth and then we went into the grays for a while and now it's like how many houses are you seeing around that are all white black and white especially the paint outside as well the way they've done the um the frames and everything there so we're in a black and white phase at the moment um we're in a white walls phase you know which we we go in and out of but um so i don't know i i like i like black tapware i like um i love the gorgeous lighting too you know the beautiful um pieces that are out there that have become a bit mass market but um i just think black's timeless so i'm kind of a fan yeah 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 i don't know I'm, i i think because every renovation now like even the cheap and nasty ones have yeah. that tapware. That sort of put me off a bit. But yeah. I'm probably um, being a little bit too opinionated about it. So well, got... You can go and get black tapware from Ikea, I guess. That's the thing. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, if I can get it at Ikea, then it's really mass market. But, it is, uh, yeah, because it used to be, you know, that you're a bit out there, but now it's not. And and so we have a saying. So David, our son, is an architect mm -hmm. and works in the business, and he, he always says when I talk about having, like, uh, different metals other than, you know, like stainless steel or chrome, he says that they're gateway drugs because once you go with a, like, a, a copper tapware, you've got to get your door hardware, your, your toilet seat things, you know, like if you're going to do the job properly. So, um, yeah. But anyhow, I, I think they have their place um, depending on the project. So if you um, do you ever do a white colour scheme? Yeah, well, I never just, I never, in case people think I'm this crazy colour person that's going to give them a purple wall, then a yellow and a pink and um, don't laugh, I went to a client's home recently and that's exactly what she had. She loved it. And I thought that was cool. But um, no, I, I use the colour strategically, but I don't use it through the whole house. So yeah. I'll have sort of, uh, I did a, a living room recently and, and it was pink and emerald green. 
I don't mean soft baby pink. I mean it's pink. Oh, wow. <laughs> not yeah. hot pink, not hot, hot pink, which is uh-huh. very garish, but it was a, quite a sophisticated dusty pink, but it's still pink. So, yeah. ha, you know, bottom third of this wall was uh, emerald green, sofa emerald green, and then the top was uh, collection mm-hmm. moulding and things and mirrors and, and pendants, but, but pink. But that's it. I don't keep going into other rooms and then go into orange. I kind of... Um, like to have a moment, but then I really do use a lot of white as well, because I think we need to we need a break yeah. <laughs> from that. So, and you, so you're making a statement in a particular room, but yeah. the rest of the yeah, that's actually or a couple of rooms or a couple of rooms, or use a, a, a fun wallpaper in a powder room or something. But because um, I think we need we need little pops of interest, don't we? Set somewhere, but um, definitely not just this crazy person splashing colour, there needs to be a stop point. Oh, I'm pleased to hear that. <laughs> Contrary to what you're seeing here. <laughs> so so um, if you're going to go for a white, what would be your favourite white? Oh, you know, I wanted to talk to you, Bernadette. Uh, that's a really good question. I wanted to talk to you about white um, and just about this notion of a go-to white. Actually, I, I feel like I want to jump in and ask you before I tell you what your what your answer is oh, to that. I'm question. happy to answer that. My favourite <laughs> is white on white. Oh, okay. So that's that's the Dulux. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that's that's a cool white, but it's not like Lexicon, right? No. So, no, a little bit art gallery white. It's very clear. Um, bit n- not as it's a little bit cooler than vivid white. Um, see, I love I love that angle. I think it's versatile. Um, I don't like cool whites generally. Uh, another color that's really really uh, sorry. Another white which is great if you want to warm things up a teeny teeny tiny bit. And no, let's not talk about yellow or cream or antique. USA. We're not going there with no. antique cream. But there's a couple of colours. I don't mind natural white from Dulux. You might find it a bit too creamy because I know. I have used it. Yeah, I know you would know about your whites, Bernadette. Yeah. Or popcorn from, from Porter's is oh. less what, less cream than natural white. I mean, if you look at um, your white on white and you look at natural white together, you're going to go, oh, my God, natural white's yellow and white on white's a true art gallery white. But um yeah, popcorn is a little bit less than that. So with the natural white, uh, I, I like a little bit of warmth, but I, I can see why you like the white on white because it's very specific and it doesn't have – it's not too cold. It's kind of that in-between. I must uh, admit the last project that we used it on was um, was in um, a, a, an apartment we did in Charmer Street and I really felt that it was a tiny bit too clinical. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, like everyone loved it. Nobody said, oh, you know, that white's too cool. But my personal feeling was that it was just a tad, yeah. a little bit too cool. It could have just done with being a little bit warmer. But well, Le- Lexicon is the true cool white there. You know, just say we look at our top five at Bunnings or whatever. So our Lexicon's going to be our, our cool cool colour and then there's different strengths as you know you can go with half or quarter but then your white on white to me is kind of that in between say vivid white which has no it's kind of like the the piece of white card that has no warm or cool undertone so you've got vivid white this is these are dualux colours yeah i know what we're talking about so dualux vivid white and then the white on white to me is the cooler version which could be why it seemed to you bernadette and to me to to come off as a little clinical which could be a little cool it's yeah. because it still has a grey base. Yeah. Mm. So you haven't told me your favourite yet. Well, my favourite white is Popcorn by Porter's Paints. Oh, oh yeah. I use Porter's Paints. Well, I, I kind of, I use Porter's Paints, Bernadette, more for the saturated colours, for the brighter colours, okay. because I like their eggshell acrylic. And um, the only thing with porters is if you've got kids and you're using eggshell acrylic, you might uh, not necessarily choose that finish because it, you can see the little fingerprints uh, because it's quite matte. Yeah. But it's the same when you go with a, you know, a, a slight uh, sheen, you can also, or actually a heavier sheen, you can also see fingerprints. So, but I like porters for the saturated colour because it's got a very chalky, lovely okay. um, finish to it. But um I just discovered kind of popcorn one day and it, it's just, it's it's even less 
there's less yellow in the base than natural white from Dulux. But because I like a bright, happy white and I don't like anything that's clinical, um, then popcorn would be my go-to white, I think. Okay. Well, thanks for that. So I've got a friend that does uh, lots of flips and her favourite at the moment is quarter strength snowy mountain. Do you like Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's interesting. But, yeah, it's a, it can be a tough one. It, 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 and you've got to really, I think, um, you, you really have to test it, uh, test the pain and try and look at it, as you would know, Bernadette, in different lights and exactly. paint it out of a sample pot, a larger spot, and just kind of try and live with it if you possibly can. I know it's not always as easy as, as that, especially when you're on a, a timeline. But, um, yeah, yeah that, that's definitely the recommendation generally for most people. If you've got the time to test it, do test on larger pieces. You get a big piece of white card. I must admit, I'm a great believer. If you get a coat on and you really don't like it, change it there and then because it's just it, you can really kill a project by getting the wrong colour. Well, that's the thing, and I think the reason I probably was thinking Bernadette about um, with the course I'm, I'm I'm creating is about just focusing on colour. It's a short course, and we go through a whole lot of the principles in getting the colour right. But the reason I focused on that is because colour is really the thing that does hit us in the hip pocket. Because I mean, I'm, I've been using painters for years. Uh, I know even if you DIY it, you could be spending two days in a room taping up, prepping the room, and then you've gone, "Oh my god, this is too pink." When the light comes in, it's like a baby pink. What happened? So you you are so right, and and the cost of painters too, um, if, oh huge. So if you've got, you know what it's like even for an apartment. You know, you're still up for a few grand. So imagine a huge house and you're making all these wrong yeah. choices. Yeah. Because um, people feel colour, do you think, Bernadette? Do you think people feel it? Absolutely. They might know it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's I why so. because people like Woolworths and Coles spend so much money money on their brand and getting their colours right because it yeah. impacts how people feel about their brand. So, uh, of course, Yeah. Yeah, so I think people feel it. They might know it. I'm, I don't think many people go, you know what, That there's too much grey blue behind that. They're not going to know that. All they're going to know is when they walk in, they're going to think, it just feels a bit chilly in here or mm. you know, maybe we need to repaint here. And, and that could be, I don't know, I think it could be, I would be thinking the make or break maybe if you've got something similar that feels warm and homely and you've got sort of just this emotion involved. I don't know. It is It is important to get the paint colour right, I think, and it you is. are right, nix it if it's not working. Yeah. After after you've seen the reality, just make yeah. another choice. Stop. Absolutely. You're better to cut your losses than paint the whole thing, bore ahead, and then then realize it's wrong and it's really ruined your um your outcome. Whether it is in your own home or whether it's um. I totally uh, agree with that. Yeah. So um. So what about bathrooms? Color in bathrooms. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, I, look, I I, uh, I don't think I've really done an out there bathroom, to be honest, Bernadette. I think I always think that um, when we go into the bathroom area, we do want to kind of, it's a respite, isn't it? We just yeah. want to wash out the tension of the day or, or refresh ourselves in the morning and not have too much going on. I mean, I kind of do see some of these funkier bathrooms out there, but I tend to probably, it wouldn't be my, my I don't know, I don't really like to see a whole lot of that patterned um, you know that sort of Moroccan mo uh, tile oh, yeah. that's out there? <laughs> I like a little bit of it, but I don't want to kind of, if, you, if you're if you thinking about whether or not I would do this, I wouldn't particularly like it all over the walls. I probably would have a little detail, me personally. I would put some sort of detail in there, but I wouldn't want to keep going with it. It's just a personal thing. I kind of like to leave it to other areas. But when we're in there and we're kind of just getting started or finishing off, I kind of do tend to to probably play it down a bit in terms of colour in the bathroom. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. And so um, one of the things that we often do is mirror nature in our, um, in our you know, colours and styles. Has that featured much in your work? Mirrored nature. So I'm, yeah, you know how at the moment, you know, we've got you. You're talking about the salmon, but it's you know, yeah, it's yeah. often referred to as clay. You know, those sort of summer colours. Yes, um, and the the eucalyptus and the grey, you know, weathered timber. Yeah, I'm just curious to know whether that's a line that you follow. 
Well, when I think of nature and I think of, of those elements that you're talking about, Bernadette, I just think they give us life and they we, we all want to relate. I think especially in Australia, don't we? We all want to kind of relate to what's happening outside. We don't want to feel like we're in this other sort of universe that doesn't interact with what's happening externally. So I love the idea of that. I think there's nothing... Uh, more sort of uplifting than than you know some of these beautiful wallpapers around and they do them in like the powder rooms or or little areas or even in bedrooms that sort of makes me feel good if I see a lot of green with you know leafy green which makes me think of you know what's happening out there hopefully or if it's not happening out there and I'm in a apartment in Surrey Hills in Sydney I might want to add that in so I feel a little bit more dynamic um, I actually used a Catherine Martin wallpaper is it La Palma yeah. Oh, my God, I love this wallpaper. <laughs> uh, yes, abs- it's La Palma and it's the, uh, the, 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 pink, it's the, the pink. Yeah, the pink one. That is my favourite wallpaper of all time. Yeah, I used it in a in a job I just did in Summer Hill here in Sydney and I did it in a little bedroom that was not a main room and, and uh, I wanted to use it over all the walls and my client was kind of, we're not sure about that. Um, it's also, as you know, Bernadette, a bit more expensive to sort of fit out a whole room in wallpaper as opposed to paint. But um, I'm not really a one-wall wallpaper person, but in a way I'm kind of glad we kind of just stuck with the one wall because it is quite dynamic, as you know, and the other walls are painted in this really lovely sort of relaxing leafy green. So you've got a kind of this crazy spiral of bananas and all sorts mm. of stuff going on. Tropic, Club Tropicana. Mm. There was a Wham song. <laughs> <laughs> Club Tropicana back in the 80s. It reminds me of that, that wallpaper by Catherine. <laughs> yeah, amazing. And the um, so that's the same Catherine Martin that um, yes. made the dress out of the yeah, Amex card. The Amex gold card. Yeah, yeah. Um, the Oscars, wasn't it, about yeah, 20 years she ago? Or as Lerman's partner, or she was? I think she was. I don't know whether she still is. Oh, I'm not into Yeah, No, no, you're right. You're, you're right. She no. was. Yeah. Well, she was. She was also the set designer or whatever yeah on all those movies so um yeah it's exactly the same person she's got fabric she's got wallpaper so um yeah that that's but that's the fun side of my version of of bringing nature in and relating it back yeah i love i i absolutely love that idea i think um the wallpapers that are around at the moment are stunning and um, yeah. and definitely love the idea of bringing wallpaper into the um, equation. I have not actually done it in a project, but I am looking at a project at the moment that it's, I don't, like I'm trying to talk myself out of it actually, but <laughs> it's historic building and, um, and if I get it, I will, um, it will, be an Airbnb. So I was sort of thinking about, I've been looking at luxury Airbnbs with these beautiful yeah. wallpapered walls and I would like to get it just for the opportunity to do that. But um, <laughs> unfortunately there are a few other ramifications. But, yeah, I think it has a lot of potential. And the thing is it's so, it is quite expensive. I remember the days when a roll of wallpaper was 70 or $80 and now it's, you know, 450 But um but it does bring such such a lot of dimension to a room. And, you know, I've even, you know, and you've probably seen this too, ceilings wallpapered and, yeah, just yeah. stunning. And, yeah, so we're definitely, some of that La Palma paper, we've got a student who is actually an architect in Surrey Hills and oh. um, she did it just in a, it was quite, it was a very architecturally designed apartment, but she had these chunky shelves and a desk in a study nook and the shelves were timber and in the back of it she put the La Palma in the oh. colours, you know, the, yes. yeah, and it was yeah. really, really good. Um, That's a great idea. I love that. Yeah. So yeah. It's very, it's a, it's a great paper. It's, uh, in fact, I think it might even be vinyl, vinyl. Ah. Paper, but um, yeah, no, it's a great, it's a great paper, and I just love that idea. You know, being creative in that way, and I think, um, yeah, I just love the idea of with the Airbnb that you would consider that Bernadette, because I think that people want to escape what they exactly, get and they want to go in. So that's where you know your flamingo pink room would really <laughs> do well with the emerald. Um, Sofa. I hope the sofa was velvet. Was it? Did you say it was velvet? Oh well, the uh, the La Palma wallpaper was in a guest bedroom. Oh, okay. That was that was kind of the 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 excitement 
point yeah. was looking at the wallpaper than the rest of it was this serene green, including the Roman blinds and everything. But um, in the – no, it wasn't. The, the pink and emerald green room – we didn't go with velvet for that because the client wanted something that was a little bit more durable and didn't want to sit on velvet. So I didn't do velvet. But okay. you would you would think velvet would be a great yeah. uh, option yeah. for that scheme. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, la, la. So so have, what's your um so have you, what's your views on external paint colours? So watch well, I know we're talking about a lot about paint and nothing else, but it's yeah, sure. a part of our job. So I think mm. our listeners yeah. will be getting a lot of value out of this. Mm. Mm. Well, external paint colours, I mean, that's really, gosh, you really want to get that one right, don't you? Yeah. Because, you know, that's out there in the world. I think with external paint colours, I think uh, what you got to, well, if you want my sort of view on decisions that you need to consider is I do think we need to think about what's happening in, the street around us to a degree with the colours. And I think it's, there's flamboyance and there's being individual, uh, but I think when it comes to external paint colour, it does, as you've pointed out, Bernadette, it needs to be on point. It needs to be something that's going to last. You know, trends like, what are we thinking, maybe 10 years just with with general colourways? Yeah. We can survive that long. Yeah. Um, our grey period, you know, when we painted everything grey outside and da, 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 and now it's white outside and black. So generally it's going to be about 10 years. So you've got to really think, I mean, it's such a huge expense, isn't it, painting external mm. paint? And, you know, um, I would think you'd want to make a very probably sophisticated choice and not to out there and think about what's happening in terms of you, your neighbours. You do have to think yeah. of how you connect. Um, but, but you're probably not going to change that paint colour. It could be 20 years before we cha update our external, you know, yeah. just from, from what I know. Um, so That's exactly I, how I would look at it, yeah. I would look at what, how it sits in the, and while you want it to have a little bit of um, uh, wow, you yeah. don't want to, yeah, you don't want something that's going to date quickly. Yeah. So I think you've just got to be strategic like anything yeah. else with the external paint. Yeah. You know, it's such a huge investment of money and you're not going to generally repaint. Like we'll repaint internally, you know, maybe every 10 years less. Yeah. But um, externally from my experience, it's not something people are going to look at for a long time. So it's really important to just keep it simple and keep it uh, sophisticated, I think, with the external palette. And obviously live up to the, the, the architecture of the building and, you know, sometimes we have to follow certain colour colourways that that work for the way that the, the uh, house has been built or whatever the um whatever we're looking at yeah yeah are there any apps that we can use to make our selection of colors uh easier do you know what i saw that question bernadette and i mean i i don't personally have use apps yeah because i like to get in there and look at actual paint but you know what i came across and funny i did kind of i thought i'd I knew of an app and then I went to Canva. Have you know Canva that do all no. the graphic design stuff? I actually popped in for you a little link and there is a colour wheel in Canva. It's, it's I don't know if it's an app on phones, but you can actually go on it your is, desktop. Actually, Canva is on your phone. Oh, Canva's on the phone, right. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, there's, a, there's, there's a, a sort of link there where you can actually go in and you can type in complementary colour or you can type in analogous colour, which are colour combinations, and then you can start up, start off just sort of taking your um, cursor over to blue and then it spits out all these different variations. I'm not sure about whites and, and mixing of whites, yeah. but I think, you know, there's other strategies there that don't yeah. involve gaps with white that, that are good to follow, like looking at what's not going to change and, and tying in with that. Yeah. With the tones. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I've never thought of using Canva for that, so that's a brilliant idea. Actually, well, it's, yeah, it's this little feature. I just just yeah. found it when I was doing some graphics in Canva, and um, it just just popped up. I don't know how, but uh, if you're thinking about color palettes using sort of deeper colors, it, something like that can help you. Yeah, or just a good old Google search. I mean, I still do it, Bernadette. Yeah. I don't sit there and pretend that I've got all the answers. I might go into Pinterest. I might go into Google. And if I'm kind of keen on, you know, gunmetal grey blue, then I might say what's colour palettes, gunmetal grey. And it'll spit out things that I mightn't have even been thinking of and that gives yeah. me a kickstart sometimes just by Googling. Yeah. that's There's so awesome. many options. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. 
Um, we've talked about oh, we've talked about fixing bad colour decisions. Do you think we've covered that well enough? Well, that's a tough one, isn't it? Because um, sometimes we've made bad colour decisions. Sometimes it's with paint, or sometimes it's with you know when you go. Have you ever? I don't know if you've ever done this, but um, something's on sale. It's a, it's a really good sofa, but it's it's on sale, and we haven't really got our room scheme figured out. But we think it'll work, and then when you get it home, you realise that it's kind of petrol green leather. <laughs> um, so look to cut to to answer your question, whether it's paint or leather or whatever. Yeah. You have to keep going with it. So you have to keep using the colour that you actually don't quite like. And then what I would do is add a complementary colour in with whatever the colour is. If it's too cool a blue, then you have to kind of go, you know, I, you have to keep using the blue. So I think in terms of furnishings, you know, if I've, I've got a, I've picked a fabric that's too cool, I'm going to have to continue to incorporate that too cool blue colour in other things as well, whether it's window treatments or, or something. But the key is not to try and forget you've done it. It's you keep going with it, and um, but you keep adding in complementary colours to that odd colour. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, bringing samples home. We've got this fantastic fabric store close to us, furnishing fabrics and um, upholstery fabrics, and she buys, you probably know actually, she buys from suppliers and um, I go in there very often and I find some gorgeous linen and I think oh, that's perfect like I like to make cushions oh, yeah, because yeah. they're easy and uh, you know a, a beautiful cushion you know can make a room pop and I'll get home and I think that really does not work where I thought it would work so it's oh, sort of really right. family home that you really do have to if you can um bring samples home and not just rely on your memory um, because if it's my memory, it's not too great. Oh, yeah. And the other thing is just having a picture of something on your phone or on your iPad and thinking, okay, that's going. You know, depending on the light and depending on a whole lot of factors going on, uh, you know, you, you, what you're looking at, the fabric could be too a lot greener than it is in real life or the other way around. So yeah. that's the thing is it's, you know, we as designers, decorators, whatever, we we love to get out our, our bits of fabric and bits of hard surfaces and stone. And, um, you know, any, but anyone can do that, can't they? But it really is, it's just being intentional, you know. It's kind of like I'm sure you would do, Bernadette, you'd work it all out in advance. The problem for most people is, is they are on the fly when they're making these really important decisions. They don't have a process and a plan. Yeah. Um, so... Yeah, I, I think you'd probably agree with me on that. It's all yeah, about absolutely. Yeah. And I do say to our renovators, if they are struggling with it, to get a one thing you don't want to be doing. Like it's one thing to know the colour that you want also, but it's another thing to translate that into a code that you can actually put to the paint shop. And often you can reduce the um, the stress of it just by getting a colour consultant or a designer to help you make those decisions up front because that means when the painter comes along and says what colour paint, you can just whip out the schedule and say, yeah. here oh. it is, it's all chosen, yeah. set to, you've not got, you know, 100 paint pots and, yeah. Yeah, that's such a good, good point that you brought up, Bernadette, because I think... Um, you know, of course, I, I I love to talk about colour and I like to work with people on their colour choices, but mm -hmm. you don't have to look. We, we all know designers are not the cheapest resource to have on board, but you don't have to hire someone to, to run the whole project. You just need to get a couple of hours of their time and say, look, this is where we're at and this is what we're thinking. Can you help us coordinate the colours? And any good decorator or designer will be able to pull that scheme together, tell you what should be on the the window frames, what should be on the skirts, what should be on the walls, what finish, and put sort of this colour story together for you where the rooms connect. So if you're going to use a particular colour, then we can teach you how to sort of work with a, a colour that complements or work with the right white that complements the stone and the da-da-da and the things that you like first and foremost but are not sure how you're going to kind of figure out the rest. So I think it's a great idea, even yeah. if it's for a couple of hours. Yeah, I, I so agree. Like we yeah. do the same with the design. Like yes. if you haven't got a budget for a, an architect to run the show, at least get that help in getting your floor plan right because it's the, it's the difference between a 
so so reno and a spectacular one and same with the colors so um i'm all for that as well i we could talk for hours but i've got one more question i've got to ask you which wasn't in the pre-prepared questions um feature walls adam yeah Uh, well you know what do you like them bernadette feature walls Um, i i like the idea i prefer to do a room a whole color yeah. But uh, if I can't for some reason, I, I'm willing to go feature walls. But I think yeah. the days of, you know, you know, back, you know, probably about 10 years ago, every room was a colour with a feature wall, a different colour. Yeah. And, you know, it's like a uniform. Uh, I don't like that. But I like playing with different strengths of the same colour, a paint, and maybe yeah. do walls yeah so that's sort of my view on it and i noticed that you said that you don't like wallpapering just one wall um but right, yeah. yeah sometimes there is an application for that yeah look i i'm i think i'm with you bernadette i like i do like a bit of color and if you only want to do it on one wall that's fine but i think it is very kind of 10 years ago or even in the 90s remember that suede paint everyone was doing oh yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> and they did it as a feature wall and you're like, oh, my God, it reminds me of that. But I love your idea. You just said do it do it with a specific colour and then do the the variation of that, like maybe a half strength. Yeah. Um, the other thing is I just like colour blocking. So as opposed to one wall, you know, especially if it's a really chic colour or even a really lovely tonal colour that isn't a deep saturated colour, do it on one half. Do it kind of on one side of the apartment as a colour block. But the little sort of square rectangle whatever we're talking about yeah feature wall to me is a little bit sort of it's it's sometimes especially if it's just white walls around this other color it can kind of just point it out and the furnishings have to be really cool to be able to cope with that but i I like your idea of painting it in that color and then maybe doing a half strength or a quarter strength so we're not completely divorced yeah from that color i like that idea yeah yeah yeah. So, Adam, we have come to the end of our time, but I do think because we didn't get far past paint, but I think we should book in another session because That'd be think, lovely. we've got a lot more to talk about. We do, we do. Yeah. Um, we do have a lot more to talk about. I'd love to come on. Can I ask, can I point out my free download? For, for uh, yes, yes. So if you um, send us the link and I yeah. will, um, I had a look on your website you're an amazing wordsmith. I love the. Uh, oh. Yeah. You, Did I write it? Did I write it? <laughs> the website. Uh, now I, there was there's portions of that website that were not written by me. Okay, so download <laughs> your free guide, the Wow Factor: Your Your Three Secrets to a Jaw Dropping Home. Yeah. Yeah. That's- Oh, well, that's, that's my that's my copy. But um, that one there is just to get, it's just a, a simple PDF download that you can get. Uh, you will actually be on my list. So if you download it, you'll be connecting with me um, and, you know, you'll be speaking to me. I can hopefully share some news if you do decide to download and stay on my um, communication list there. I can share with you this colour, the details of this colour course coming out, hopefully in July. Um, it's all online and it's all very straightforward and it's going to be also... Uh, pretty affordable. I'm not trying to make anything too grand. I'm not trying to make it too expensive. But if it's colour that's your kind of bugbearer, then this is this is something you might want to hear about. But um, if you want to download the download, take it, uh, download it. It's a PDF. Little bit of little bit of detail on the things that I find add sort of the sparkle, the magic dust to to a home. So uh, if you'd like to download it, it's adamsgoogle.com forward slash free hyphen download. I think. Beautiful. We'll keep it in the show notes. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you for being such a colourful guest. I've had a great time. It's been great talking to you. And um, I think it's such a great thing uh, what you're doing, Bernadette, honestly, with with empowering, you know, women to do what they're doing because it's I just think, wow, you know, what about doing something if you're passionate about, which you are for 35 years, I think, um, if you're so passionate about Renault and interiors, what a way to to live the life and actually benefit from it financially. I think it's a no-brainer if you've it's, got the courage to do it, if you've got the courage yeah, and the support. I should mention that um, we do have the odd bloke. In fact, we have more than the odd bloke. We probably have around 20%. Oh. Yeah. 
And you know what? I sort of always say, because they say, often ask, do you have men in your program? And I say, any man that's prepared to join a program called Wonder Women is our <laughs> man. So, you just need the right type of bloke. Yeah, we do. And we have, we've got lots of um, good men, which is great. So, Oh, that's fantastic. I love hearing that. Yeah, and lots, of, and lots of our women have partners who are very involved. So it's not, I know it sounds quite exclusive, but I, and I don't want to come across as a man basher because I've loved no. a man for 35, for nearly 40 <laughs> years. So obviously I'm not that, but yeah. No, it doesn't come across that way at all. That's great. It doesn't well, come across that way. That's good. Well, listen, thank you. And, um, yeah, we'll, you. we'll see you next time. Thank you so much, Bernadette. I've had a lovely time. If you want to meet up with a group of savvy renovating, I shouldn't say it's all women because it's not, savvy renovators, I'll say, come over and join She Renovates. It's completely it's free Facebook group and it is growing at the rate of knots. We hit a 1,000 members just recently and now it seems to have picked up momentum. And so they are all savvy renovating women and men that are working their little hearts out to live a better life through renovating. Join if you're not already a member and then ask, comment and do whatever you would like to do in order to further your renovation journey. And that's it for me today. So I'll see you next week. This is the She Renovates podcast. To discover how to harness the power of renovating, check out theschoolofrenovating.com.